feet of a dancer I hope you can sing in the rain I hope you find all the easy answers to your pain It won't be easy What can I say? Cause there will be trouble on the way and around every corner with terror and tears just always remember that we're here I hope you find the feet of I didn't know any of these people um, Philip, when Philip uh, Delamere asked me to get involved in a project with the Mohal Active Age Group I kind of thought they're all, they're all old people they wouldn't want to come on then I realised I'm old as well. So I drove over in the car for the first meeting with them, which is in the Canon Donoghue Hall, and, and it's just a little meeting they have every Wednesday. And I went in and I met, I think it was about eight women inside, and uh, we started to talk. And bit by bit I began to sort of realise that these people had, every single one of them had a different story. Everybody happy? You bet your life we are. <laughs> Isn't this nice though? Yeah. It's a nice place. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah, I know, Anita, you were, you were here when it was a real courthouse. What were you up, what charge were you up on? <laughs> huh? <laughs> you were on the jury service here. I was called for jury service, but yeah. I wasn't handled. Yeah, so you weren't handled. Oh yeah, I'd love to get a really juicy murder one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a blood and guts and stuff in it. Yeah, um, my husband actually was called for a jury one time too. And he wasn't satisfied with the verdict. He said, no, that poor man didn't get justice. And you know, my wife was on the tune. She said, I just didn't like the look of him even before he opened his mouth. <laughs> yeah. But this, this is known that the, the, the place says, you know, oh, you're in the dock. <clears throat> and the dock <clears throat> was originally the courthouse. And then they were looking for a name of the cafe and they called it the jury room, which I suppose is logical enough, you know. Well, I have to say, it's been fantastic going over and back to the to, end. To, uh, since May, I think, Pat, isn't it? We started off first. Um, uh, Pat Turrell here, you're the, you're the home sec, are you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dad, what do you get up to when, when you're not fiddling around with me? Yeah, well, the active age. Yeah. We go on counting. Yeah. Another chat in the afternoon. What do you, what do you, and, and you certainly know how to chat, I know that much. <laughs> and, but we must chat so much that poor old um, Matt Gaffey here. He can't stand the chat. Uh, 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 welcome, that's the first time I saw you at the, at the Active Age Group, so it's, it's good to have you here. But uh, what kind of outings have you gone on? Wow. Cinema? You used to come to the Classic Cinema here. Oh, yes, yeah, so that's on a Tuesday. Yeah. 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 They haven't bought it back since COVID. No, COVID has thrown an awful lot of yeah, damage. It's a shame because that's something they really all really enjoyed. We've been to Cineplex a few times. Yeah, yeah. And that's not here. They're Classic cinema was a really nice afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did they give you, you, you give you tea and buns and all that kind of stuff as well? Lunch afterwards. Yeah, know, yeah. Like Pat, you're, you're, you're the hot sec, but you have an interesting story. From the, I, I, when you picked a piece of music, um, you picked up Let It Be, and I said, I choose a girl after my own heart because I'm a big Beatles fan as well. But you can't, you, you grew up in London. Grew up in South East London, yeah. in South East London. What kind of a place was that? We were in flats. Yeah. So the, the war Multi story. Was, only four stories high. Yeah, hey, we went to big multi stories. Yeah. Because that was 1953. So yeah. Quite Everything had bombed. Yeah. So everybody. So there was still, yeah, still uh, damage after that. Lots of damage, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lots yeah. of damage during music. What was, what was school like? Because, you know, when you, can you remember your first day at school? Do you remember what it was like or what it was? Scary. Scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but were you of the, of the era? Did they slap kids in, in, in school in England? Occasionally. Yeah. Not yeah, we got it every day. Yeah. yeah. Cain came out on a rare occasion. Yeah, yeah. Some boys have been hiding pens and stuff. Would you be sent to the headmaster to be, to be slapped? In front of the school. Oh, really? Mm. Serious stuff. Very serious stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in education then, how far did you go? Did you go to a secondary school as well? Oh, yeah, we went to secondary school. We did our own levels. Yeah. I did a year towards A levels, got fed up. And yeah. Went into the wide world. Yeah, that's what, doing what? I worked as a girl Friday in a manufacturing jewellers in Hatton Garden. All right. Yeah. Was handling big stuff. So they, were they manufactured the jewellery? Yeah, we bought the stones. The stones came in from the dealers. Yeah. And the gold was brought in. It was made by car 
casters and set, sent out to be polished, sent out to be made, models yeah. are made, yeah. diamonds sent out and wax for people to have rings made, yeah. and stuff brought in from Christie's and the big <sighs> yeah. people. And the, the old boss used to say, come on, model the earrings for me, Pat, when you were selling to other yeah. dealers. Because, you know, you just, beautiful stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how did you meet your husband then? At youth club. Uh, oh, yeah, that, that club. early? Yeah, we went very early. Yeah, yeah. We just plotted away quite happily. And where, what was your first date? Went to the cinema. Oh, yeah. I yeah. the film was. The cinema was yeah. easy. Do you remember that? But you could smoke in the cinema. Yeah. You know. Mm. Yeah, you had to stay at the end because and you had to stand for the Queen. Yeah, that's right. Mm. And you remember uh, there was women with th these beehive haircuts at that time and puffed up, kind of back-combed hair. A friend of mine brought his, um, um, one of these, first date, actually. And he got one of these once in lighters, you know, that, oh. that were quite new to the whole <laughs> business. And they, they, they literally flame shot up and her hair caught fire in the in the because awesome. it was full of this lacquer and stuff like that. Yeah. You, began, you came from Monaghan originally, yeah. didn't you? And, and you came to move to, to Mohol. Was that, did you tell me one time <laughs> that you were an apprentice um, to, the, to, to the drapery yeah. trade? Yeah. What did that involve? When you arrived first in Mohol, you were staying well, in the, the gallery. Qualified by the Limagat Mohol, if you could call it qualified. Yeah. I served my time for two years in, back in Ballybay. Ballybay, oh. in the town of Ballybay, mm -hmm. there was yeah. it. That were you the lassie singer, no? <laughs> <laughs> and what was it when you when you moved to Mohol? Was it a big uh, move to a bigger place or a smaller place compared it to? Was, um, just about the same now. Uh, first thing I noticed in Mohol was flagstones in the footpaths. And yeah. You know, some of them loose and straight up and wet the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, Improved on that. And did you mean? There was a lot of, there was seven draper shops in yes. when I came to it. Seven, imagine seven, that. And there's yeah. none now at all. Yeah. But uh, I spent, uh, between all, I spent over 40 years. Were you in the ladies' department or the gents' department? Oh, uh, the ladies. Yeah, my mum was in the ladies' as well. Busy. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah. At that time, we never closed. And, in eight o'clock week evenings, eleven, there's no good in him and That's a long day. Yeah. That's a long day. Nine in the morning. And who did you who did you get married to then? What was that all he about? He was a local man round yeah. Des Tegnan. And where did you see him? Oh he lived in the town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I met him a few times and did he, did he come up and uh, sort of go into the drapery shop and say, are you doing anything Saturday night or what happened? Or did you meet him yeah, at the dance? Actually, it was on uh, St. Patrick's Day and all the, all the girls were gone home. And I happened to be a good girl. I went up to the chat and said a few prayers. Yeah. It was a garage across the road, James Cash, and heard him out, and he's dead now, but his son was there. Yeah. And he, was, he used to help out James, and he came over and we had a chat, and he was going. That night he was going down to Swaddling Barwood. They came in fellow to Mobile and the wife. He was a hypnotist. Oh. That's all he done. Yeah. And uh, Desmond had the driving of him for the fortnight he was in Mobile. He went to the different country. He drove him around. Yeah. yeah. And I went down and he, he was doing all sorts of hypnotizing. Was he doing this for a show or for therapy? Yeah, for that was his living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a show, like. As a show. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. For him. And then it went from that to a dance. Uh, we went to Ruskley. Because we were off the building at Cloudland. He must have had a car or so, had he? He had a hackney car. Oh, yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And uh, the Cloudland was built, and there was a lot of talk at that time, it was built on a graveyard. All oh, right. And, uh, but it went ahead. And oh, yeah, it was there for years. Reynolds years, yeah. They yeah. built one up in Granard and yeah. during the Tullam you know, Yeah, well, they had the Reynolds group, group, I think, had them. Um, Albert Reynolds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After all. That. Yeah, after all. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. It, it went on and on. And, I we were thirteen years together Going out. before we got married. I was only he told me stay, sixteen didn't he? or seventeen. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We could get married. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that was a good time. We danced from, as my mother used to say, hell to Hanover. You love dancing, do you? Love dancing from hell to Hanover. She used to say, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, there was all the good bands over at the time. Uh, Larry Coney and Wavy Evans and he was down oh, there yeah. up Fair of Bill. Who was? He ran the Fianna Oh, the Fianna Fianna yes, I remember that. The Neeson Huts. Yeah. He down the north and fought after the war. The, all these Neeson Huts. It was an iron structure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the stage could be moved backwards and forwards. No, it was uh, there in the one spot. Was it? Yeah. But, uh, the first night he opened, there was about 1,500 people in it. But he, uh, 
He wouldn't tolerate uh, fighting or rowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we, 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 I think we should have a song, will we? Song. We'll go for a song. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of things from my. I grew up in the fifties as well, uh, and um, you know, one of the. Anybody remember that? Yeah. I want you to tell me why you walked out on me. I'm so lonesome every day. I want you to know that since you walked out on me, it's very clear what I'd say. Nothing seems to be the same old way. Think about the love that burns within my heart for you The good times we had before you went away on me You ready? Walk right back to me this minute Bring your love to me, don't send it I'm so lonesome every day Margaret, you, you originally from Dublin what part, part, of, what part of Dublin? From Condra. From Condra, yeah, yeah. But when you, when you arrived in Mohill on the farm for the first time, I mean, it's a lonely spot, I'd imagine. Uh, well, they were very nice people. Yeah. So it wasn't all that Did much. you stay with his people or did you? Oh, yeah, we stayed with his people. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we eventually built our own house then, you know. So. Yeah. My mum came, my mum grew up in Dublin and she found, uh, when, when she moved to rural Ireland, a big, a big challenge to her, she couldn't get used to it. Mainly I, I, she... I, loved, I, loved, I loved the country and I loved Isn't the that farm brilliant? and I loved the animals and yeah. I started milking cows and I used to go out and uh, bring them in and keep an eye on them when they were ready to calf and I did all that and bring the milk to the creamery uh, before I brought the children to school Yeah. and um, yeah, I loved it. How many children had you got? Four. Four boys yeah. and girls, or one, one girl and three boys. And where are they all now? Um, they're all they're all, all living at home around. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One of them is in Sligo, but the, the other three are in Mohan. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You know, and get talking to you at all? Yes. You 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 came from from. Uh, County Limerick. I was the first receptionist in the region in Limerick. Yeah. At the time. Yeah. But if you don't mind me saying so, you you've a, you've a really beautiful speaking voice. You know, you sound like I I remember. Um, that you did you did you ever have elocution lessons? Never had elocution lessons, but the school that I went to was a a, a kind of a an upper yeah. layer school. Mm. Uh, the, the FCJ is in Brough in County Limerick. Right. What is FCJ? What is Faithful that? Faithful Companions of Jesus. All oh, right. And yeah. there was only one other um, one other branch, and it was in Montclody in Wexford. Yeah. And. Uh, they were always, they went big into this business of elocution and that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. They didn't, they did it in the norm. Yeah, they didn't have a specific they class. They didn't know. They'd no. correct you if you said something they, they grammatically incorrect or whatever it was. And we were all, I had mean, four, three sisters, and I think we, were, we all got that bling as such. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And uh, we all came through and had good careers and had good careers like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go, go to you now. Uh, you, you uh, what's your story? Uh, you, did you grow up in Mohill, are you? Uh, no, I was born on the farm. Right. And I was the eldest of five. Um, on the farm where? Outside Mohill? Like outside Mohill. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, at that time, the, nearly everybody was a home birth. Yes. It was very rare that yeah, you yeah. went to hospital. So there was a, 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 um, yeah. somebody, a nurse would come around? Yeah. Yeah, it was usually a lady from the area or a yeah. midwife or Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you got married when then? In nineteen sixty nine. Sixty nine, yeah. 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 Didn't yeah. I not too much just ahead of myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. how did you meet himself? Well, uh, I saw him first at a marquee in Woodbrook. Yeah, and in the summer, I remember uh, people when the when the when the carnivals were on and the the, the marquees, there were people dancing seven nights a week. Oh yeah, yeah. The roads, yeah. And this was these were so supposedly hard times. Yeah. Yeah. I know, yeah. I worked with this girl in the office, and every morning, she, she, you know, I tell you, what did you do last night? Dancing. I went dancing, yeah. and this was every single night of the week during the summer. Yeah. Major, major stuff. So I went to Dublin then after about three years there. And I worked there for another three years. Yeah, yeah. But he used to come home every second weekend and heat them up the weekends. 
in between. Yes. So. These wonderful people have so much to say when they tell us the stories of their good old days. I could listen to them for the whole afternoon. The older the fiddle, the sweeter the tune. Well, some days were happy and some days were sad. And although there were good times, some times were bad. When we danced our feet off in those old ballrooms, the older the fiddle, the sweeter the tune. Yes, the older the fiddle, the sweeter the tune. When singers like Big Tom and Larry would croon, and we'd wander home by the light of the moon. The older the fiddle, the sweeter the tune. You know, there wasn't much money, and there wasn't much wealth, but I'd swear by my soul that we had better health. Yes, the work it was hard, but it, it kept the weight down. The older the fiddle, the sweeter the tune. Yes, the older the fiddle, the sweeter the tune. When singers like Big Tom and Larry would croon, when we'd wander home by the light of the moon. The older the fiddle, the sweeter the tune. So come gather round us and listen a while. You may shed a tear, but you will raise a smile when you hear of the old times and the things we were doing. The older the fiddle, the sweeter the tune. Yes, the older the fiddle, the sweeter the tune. When singers like Big Tom and Larry would croon, and we wandered home by the light of the moon. The older the fiddle, the sweeter the tune. Yes, the older the fiddle, the sweeter the tune. I haven't met you before, Matt. Uh, I, I discovered this morning you were a history teacher. And what you, you went and did your degree? What did you do your degree in? The BA or? A BA in English and history. In, in Galway. Yeah. Yeah, and what was the difference, you know, when you, when you came, you, you went to, you lived in the country first, yes. then you moved into the city. Yes. What was it like when you moved from a small little place, culture, wasn't it? Yes. Um, what was it like moving from there into the, into the city, which is a, a pretty busy city, Galway? It was a very traumatic experience, I mm. thought, because uh, uh, culture was a lovely little uh, close knit community. Yeah. Everybody knew everybody else. It was great community spirit in the village and all that kind yes. of thing and then to move into a place like Galway which is very impersonal particularly for somebody coming from the country area not knowing anything about Why it. did you move to Galway? Well uh, we my mother and myself, my, my brother and myself uh, lived with my uncle for a while because yes. my father was working in, in Scotland. Oh right, right, yes. Shipbuilding over there. Yeah. Uh, so my uncle got married then and we, uh, it was a natural progression for uh, my mother and myself and my yeah. to move out. Yeah. So my dad came home from Scotland and we we went into Galway. We got an apartment in Salt Hill, a, 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 a basement apartment. Right. We were there for about six months when mother woke us walk up one morning and the uh, tribe was up to the bed. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> That was our first experience of that, so we moved to another place, which, which was more... It was upstairs, as you found it. <laughs> and where did you go to school then, secondary school? I went to the big place called the Bishop Margaret. Well, now, I went to the brother, to the Lasalle brothers, and they were pretty rough. Yeah. What I wondered was, you know, that some of them were very skilled with the cane. Yes, yeah. And it's not, you know, when you play golf, like there's a good distance between you and the golf ball, and these people were able to hit you in exactly the right spot. Yeah. Right yes. down. Yeah. I w wondered, you know, in teacher training college, were they, t were they <laughs> taught how to do that? Huh? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and my mother and my father would be going, going home crying and they'd look at it, probably did you good, you were probably up to something anyway, you know, that kind well, of Well, that was the way it was that time. You wouldn't yeah. go home and report. Oh, particularly if there were Christian brothers or, 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 or yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, there's a lady hiding up at the back there. Um, more, good, good afternoon, good day or good night. How are you? We met you for the first time. I found your story very interesting because you grew up in northeast England. Tell us about that. It was a fishing community. My father had grown up at Seaton Crew near Hartlepool, Newcastle. Yes, yes. So he was into all this fishing and everything. Professional fishing, though, as a, for a um, living? Well, from a, from a young boy, he'd yeah. been going off in the boats, the cobbles and things. Yeah. And when we moved to, we moved from the Lake District to Saltburn, which is just below Middlesbrough. Right. And he bought cobble. And he would fish all summer. And we'd be around, three yeah. girls. Yeah. We'd be around, very interesting. And winter time, we used to do what we call sea calling. Sea calling? Sea calling. Yeah, yeah. Sea calling. Yeah. And he'd have a, on the back of his tractor, he'd have a trailer. And we used to have to go down because he was a bit of a. Boss. Strict hard yeah, yeah, man, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> for, I can't put it any other way. Yeah. And we used to have to go down when the sea came away, in other words, when there was a gale or a storm. It would wash all this sea coal up from further up the coast, right. from the coal mines. Oh, yes, yes, yes. From yeah, the yeah. thumbling th 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 coal mines, yeah. let's say. And it used to get washed in and yeah. salt burn and further down the really yeah. Well, I think we should have another song. What do you think? Does anybody remember? I remember about 1956, 55, 56. There was a song, it was a murder ballad about this lassie that got stabbed to death. Uh, and um, she was stabbed to death by a fellow called Tom Dooley over in America. You look at you're all laughing. Because we used to sing that song, it was the happiest song in, in the world, you know? Uh, uh, and uh, I, I would give a verse or two of that one. Hang your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Poor boy, you're gonna die. I met her on a mountain. There I took her life. I met her on a mountain. I killed her with my knife. Everybody say that. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. For boy, you're gonna die. No. I didn't even have to ask for applause that time. We were just talking about yourself over there, um, Patsy. You grew up in Mohill, but just you spent 54 years in London. The completely the opposite way around than everybody else so far. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it was a really lovely childhood. Yeah. Um, but I got bored. I wanted to spread my wings. This is as a teenager, though, yeah. back into your teenage years. So um, I had a job working in the factory in Carrick. Had to lie to my mother. Um, said I got the sack, so she let me go to England. <laughs> Did you know somebody in England? Um, I went over with a family that I used to visit every year. Right. But but the conditions were that I lived with my auntie, and I pretended I was two years older than I was, so that I could earn enough to keep myself. Yeah. What did you work at? In a factory. Where? In England. In. Well, at first of all, it was Cheshire. I yeah. was in Cheshire for a couple of years, and mm. then the rest was in London. And did you get married over there? Um, I did. Yeah. yeah. I married a childhood sweetheart. Ah. Oh. I also divorced him. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You kind of look at people, of particularly women of a certain age, that they're kind of fragile, and maybe you think like you know they, but they have an awful lot to say, and they have an awful lot of background and stuff to talk about. Men are slightly different. Men don't talk about themselves anyway that much, you know. Why did you say that? What was the? the, the where did you see Ireland? Or where did you, you know? Well, funny enough, I, I didn't know. I yeah. didn't know. Um, um, my husband come from Mogo. Oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. So I met him in London. Yeah. Do you remember the day you met him or the first time you saw him? Or? Well, he came over uh, to work, as most young Irish men did. Yeah. 
and he was working building one of the undergrounds, right. the Green Line actually yeah. was, and so we used to just sort of meet accidentally yeah. for, for a while. And then it became accidentally on purpose. I was going to, I was coming from work, yeah, yeah. and he was going to work, because yeah. they, worked, they built the underground at night, yeah. Yeah. and we got to know each other, yeah. and then we got, and then when we married, yeah, and we had, so when we had two children, um, he persuaded me <laughs> that Mulder would be a better place to right. bring up the children in yeah. London. So we came to live in Mulder. And what, what, uh, what was his people? What was, the, you know, what, you know, when you come to Mulder, you obviously either have a farm or you have some way of, of life. No, or, they, um, funnily enough, his parents um, lived in High Terrace, a few doors away from where Patsy was. Exactly, yeah. I didn't know that. Small thing, world. Of course, and his father was a postman. Yeah. And his mother stayed at home. Like, yeah. yeah. So we came over with the two children, and um, I don't know what sort of, I had a rosy idea perhaps about Ireland, but we walked into his mother's house, and there she was, big open fire, the crane, and the pots and pans, and her cooking on the open fire. Yeah. And it just, to me, that was like walking into a museum. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> it was just, yeah. I couldn't believe that yeah. anyone lived like that. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, from London. Yeah. yeah. You would have grown up in Dublin, and you would have gone to things like the the the, the, the pantomimes and the and the games of laughter with Jack Cruz and all those. No, I remember my grandmother bringing us to see Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs oh. in Savoy. All oh, right, was that a, a, a film or, or a, film, a film? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I think every child was brought to that yeah. at that stage. But there was a huge um, entertainment oh, um, yeah. industry in in Dublin alone. You yeah. know, when you think Noel Purcell and all those, oh, yeah. Maureen Potter, Jack yeah. Cruz, these yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, well, I, 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 would, I would have only known them from hearing them on the radio. Yes. Um, does anybody remember the, what they listened to on the radio? Do you remember what you listened to on the radio years and years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, of course, television came. Yeah. The first television in the neighbourhood was a fellow called Joe Mara. We live we lived out, in the, out in the country and, 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 and he got a, a television into the house. And it, the television was so big, it was almost as big as the table over there. Yeah. So he got rid of the table and he put the tablecloth over the, the television <laughs> and he'd have his dinner on the, on, the, on the television and then take it off. And all the neighbours would come in to, to look at Joe's television. Yeah. And uh, he, was, he, was the, he was the expert, he was the boss, like it's my television and I know everything about it. Yeah. But uh, he always used to call it horror. You know, he'd come into us in the shop on a, on a, on a morning and he'd say, there's just there was great stuff on her last night, you know, <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> like it was a tractor or a car, yeah, I was to say, yeah, you know, yeah. they were always feminine, the, the, these yeah, machines, exactly. you know. When you look at television now, you know, I, I remember one day my son, my late son, I was were, were lounging back, he was over there and I, and I was over here and the television was over there and there was a coffee table there with the remote on it. And uh, I said to Shane, we change the channel there. Ah no, you do it. Ah no, you do it. Ah no, you do it. And, and Shane said, Ah no, we leave it as it is. <laughs> you know. But when you think back when the television came in, how snowy the picture was. Yeah. You know, and you, there, there was a cat. You could have a, a rabbit's ears cat yeah, type area, right. or your dad would get up in the area and you'd be shouting up to him to. To, to turn it a bit that way, a bit that way. No, you haven't. You know, <laughs> it was terrible nowadays. It's, it's, it's modern. I remember. For does anyone remember the, 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 getting their first washing machine? Yes. Yeah. Was it the one with the roller? With the roller, the electric thing? roller. You, know, yeah. you rolled the thing through it. Yeah. Well, ours came, and a man, a man called Eric Dilbert delivered it. The ESP yeah. delivered all those things in those days. Yeah. And didn't his tie get caught yeah. in the roller when he was demonstrating? Yeah. Broke his teeth at the front. Oh. <laughs> it's run into the roller. But we laughed. We oh. laughed, but it wasn't funny. Maybe it's a thing that had to be cut off the roller. Oh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. When you think about it, even monster of a thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. <coughs> and noisy. You know. Does anyone remember people having a scullery? Yeah. You know, and it was a, quite a small room with the cooker. And possibly the washing machine yeah. and, and the fridge, and, and the, the poor woman in the house would have to, would have to, uh, do all her chores, all the cooking. You still have a scullery. Yeah, yeah. yeah we call the scullery now the utility room. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. There's always a scullery or a pantry. Yeah. Yeah. Pantry. Pantry. Yeah. And you remember before fridges, there were there were a, a, a cold. A, 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 Ice boxes. Yeah. Yeah. But no, but there was there was a place, an outdoor thing that with that, a mesh, with a mesh on the front. Of it. The parish priest. 
where I lived, um, we'd have to go now and again up with a message. Yeah. And of course, you wouldn't go to the front door, you'd have to go around to the oh, back yeah. door. And there was a wooden affair on the wall, a very fine mesh. Yes. And that was the... To the, keep the flies off it. Yeah, to keep it Stuff like that, yeah. They had it outside the door. Yeah, we had a grocery shop and, and, and a, there was a, the bacon slicer. And it was only years later that we discovered that you were not supposed to slice the bacon and the cooked ham on the same yeah. thing. Yeah. And she would have to put... Nobody died at all. No, no. <laughs> you, think we were, you think we were healthier in those days? I, I think remember we were Mrs. Gannon was going to help Derek. And she sent some of the girls over, I don't know if it was me, to Bradshaw's for a few slices of ham. Yeah. And in seven year presence there was grubs in it. <laughs> <laughs> Scrape them off to be right. Bridges or nothing. Yeah, yeah. Rub yeah. them off. Or yeah. Uh, oh. And you remember, I, I mean, I can remember uh, life before sliced pans, for example. You know, when my father, we had a grocery shop, my father would have to slice the bread by hand because yeah. we used to give bread and, and uh, bread and jam to the school because oh. the, uh, people who couldn't afford lunches were given bread and jam. And it was Bo Peep Jam, I always remember, and I ended up living where the Bo Peep Jam was made. <laughs> but every morning he'd be up at 7 o'clock and he'd slice three or four loaves with the thing, butter them, put the jam in, and then parcel them up in brown paper, which was a skill in itself. Yeah. And I would have to carry these over to the school, and many's the morning it slipped and fell and the whole thing would be all over the floor. <laughs> and he'd, he'd kill me for it yeah. altogether. But, you know, um, what are the things you miss from those days and, what are the, and the things you, that, that are gone that you wish were back? You know. Well, the people were different. There was more friendship in the people then than back then. Yeah. You know, you could walk into your neighbour's house and have a chat. Or yeah. They'd come in. There was a couple of women lived down below where I lived, and there was a shop up the road. And the, each one of them would come in and come in and sit down for five minutes. Yeah. And to the shop and yeah. come back down and come in again. Never yeah. in a hurry. Do you, you remember all the doors being open? Do you remember yeah. going in from other people? You know, you had the free, if you were a child particularly, yeah. Yeah. you had the freedom of walking from one yeah. house into the other yeah. house and nobody, yeah. nobody passed a bit of remark. There were people living in the country. I, we lived in the country and nearly every house there was people in them. Big families, yeah. 14 children and some of them. You know, nowadays, when, when, no, when our doorbell rings nowadays, sometimes I say, well, I'm in the middle of Coronation Street, I can't help. I'm not going to answer the door. You know, uh, but great stuff now, you can just tape it and record yeah, it and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and it's there. Yeah. Think of another song, would we? Yeah. Does anybody remember, anybody remember this one? This was a song, uh, it was recorded by a man called Tennessee Ernie Ford. It was a, one used to say he had a big dark brown voice. And uh, the song, um, uh, it's about a fella that he was, I thought he, he, he was born one morning and he was only 50 minutes alive and he went down and he loaded 16 tonnes of coal onto the back of a truck. I, I thought it was an amazing feat altogether. Yeah. But my mother told me that it was our coal man. Do you remember when the coal man had come? Yeah. And he was always black faced yeah. and he had a, a leather thing that, and he had the bag of coal yeah. and, and bring it down through the house and then dump it in the coal burn. She used to tell me that if I wasn't good, I'd be sent away to, to, to work with him. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. The song, the, if you want to join in, it's not too, too difficult. You just have to repeat the word do about 500 times. You ready? Yeah. Are you ready? I can't hear you. You should see yourself, you're like goldfish. <laughs> Some people say a man is made out of love. Poor man's made out of muscle and blood. Muscle and blood. Skin and bones, a mind that's weak and a back that's strong, you know, 16 tons. What do you get? Another day older and deeper and dead. Say, Peter, don't you call me because I can't go. Oh, my soul, the new store. You're in. I hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more. What you say? You're ready? Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. Then you come back no more. Well, Johnny, mean Johnny, why'd you do this to me? I got no more words than this song to sing. So, that's if you say so. I bet I my bad man. Last time, hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more.
these wonderful people have so much to say when they tell us the stories of their good old days I could listen to them for the whole afternoon the older the fiddle the sweeter the tune 